love you, Father. Hallelujah. Be greeted, saints, this morning. Come on, join us as you worship and praise the Lord this morning. Come on, give me hand, sing.
good to be in the house of the Lord. And now it is time that we declare that we show that our God indeed, He is good. And this is how we do it.
appreciate our lovely choir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You may take your seats on your way down. Please greet the person next to you. Good morning to our senior pastors, Reverend S.C. and P.A. Matebula. Sanbonan Mahop Amashe. My name is Kawe, and I'm going to be representing the incorruptible teens in welcoming you today. I would also like to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers joining us here today. Including the mothers at home, we haven't forgotten about you. Now, in the spirit of welcoming, I'd just like to ask everybody that is here for the first time to raise your hand. This is not to embarrass you. This is to welcome you. If you would keep your hands raised, the ushers will greet you with a welcome booklet. In this booklet, there is a perforated page. I ask that you may fill in this perforated page and kindly hand it into the baskets during offering time. This is not you taking membership into our church. This is just a way so that we can inform you of upcoming events and stay in contact with you. Now, after the service, don't be so quick to rush home because we have even more prepared for you. In this same booklet, there's a voucher good for some refreshments at the coffee shop. The coffee shop is outside these doors down the hall to the left. It has glass doors and red chairs. For more directions, please ask the ushers after the service. Amen. Now, in spirit of Mother's Day, I would like to invite Mamuruti on stage so we can appreciate her. We would just like to present you with these lovely flowers and this gift in appreciation of how much of a wonderful mother you have been to us. Thank you. I really, really, really hope that you guys enjoy the service that the Lord has helped us prepare for you. Now I would like to call on to Amate for our offering. Can we give a round of applause? Greetings, greetings. Hello. How are you all today? We are good. So I'd like to greet Pastor S.C. Matebula and Rev. No, Rev. S.C. and Pastor P.A. Matebula in the wonderful name of Jesus. And as I greet all of you and the body of Christ. Amen. It is time for offering. It is time for offering. It's time for our blessings. It's time for offering. So the verse that I'm going to start with today is Acts 20, verse 34 to 35. It says, Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who are with me. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So in this word, we see that the Lord has provided for us. He is our main source of wealth and we give back to him to show appreciation and gratitude. It is more blessed to give than to receive because the more we give, we get internal satisfaction and we build the habit of giving, which makes us grateful people and the more you give, the more cheerfully you'll give. Okay, my second verse is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will be put into your bosom. For the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So giving unlocks our blessings. Giving gives us the answers to our prayers. Because most of the time we pray for things to God and we expect him to deliver. And he is trusted to deliver. Yet we still don't give back to him. And which is what I want to encourage you to do today. There's nothing that you can give to God that he needs, yet he still satisfies our needs abundantly, which is why we give to him to be thankful for that. He gives to us abundantly, and there's nothing that we can get from this world that we won't get from God. Yes. And also, you can also give by serving God into the church, giving, offering your services, or using your passions to help others, which is another way to give, and it glorifies God. 
So may you please bow your heads as I pray for the offering. Okay. Dear God, we're here today to show gratitude and grateful and be grateful for what you've done for us, Lord. Please encourage us to have cheerful hearts that give cheerfully and be grateful, Lord. May you please bless the hands that give today and encourage those that haven't to give. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So in this church, there are many ways to give. You could either use cash, EFT, or SnapScan. And if you want to give with EFT, I encourage you to, off, I mean, to pay by the front desk in the lobby as you enter. And may you please glue your eyes to the screen for the announcements. Remember, you can use one of our many secure platforms to give. Go on to our HRM app, click on the campus you're from, and find the EFT details at the bottom. Alternatively, you can use SnapScan. Download it onto your mobile device, fill in your details as well as the amount. You can also scan the QR code appearing on the screen right now. Thank you for partnering with Hope Restoration Ministries in expanding God's kingdom, and God bless you. Good morning, brethren. We thank God that you've been able to join us this morning in person as well as through our online channels. My name is Ole Guha, and these are your HRM News. Reverend Essie and Pastor P.A. Matibula would like to thank all the ladies that came through to the Ladies' Night. May the Lord continue to bless you. I love you. I see that there's also like such a, a gap, not just in age, but just in the way that... Graduate, um, you know, qualify, CASA, hello. <laughs> I, I, I'm a shepherd. As long as I'm here, I'm a shepherd. That image that is portrayed by the other people are put onto you. I, I've been liberated from shame from the day I found out that Jesus carried it for me. We lay your life your hair before your thought. Hey, we love you, Lord. We love you. Who is able to raise? Those who will say, Lord, I stand for you. You know, when we sing and we say, even when it's not popular to stand out, because the Lord was saying to them, stand out. Pastor P.A. Matabula would like to invite all the ladies and gents to the victorious tour evening that will take place on the 21st of May at 6 p.m. at the Midrand campus. Invite all your family and friends and come and be blessed. Well, ladies, we have a Mother's Day special for you. For today only, tickets are discounted at a hundred rand. So hurry and go to Web Tickets, pick and pay, or ask the registration team to assist you in purchasing yourself a ticket. Do yourself a favor and buy the tickets to the annual Victoria's Conference that will take place from the 25th to the 26th of August at the Sunbet Arena in Pretoria. For today only, gold tickets are going for 450, silver tickets 350, and bronze tickets 250. If you have experienced any loss of any kind, please note that the Recovery Dynamics class will take place from tomorrow the 15th of May at half past six at Office Park room number 20, and every Monday thereafter for six weeks. Topics that will be covered are dealing with shame, guilt, forgiveness, and many more. Should you wish to be a part of this course, please register your name at the information desk. If you have attended the membership class and have not yet attended Encounter, well, this one is for you. Please note that the Encounter weekend will take place from the 26th to the 28th of May at the Hope Camp in Mahalisburg at a cost of only 850. Should you wish to be a part of this, please register your name and pay at the information desk. Now save the date, Incorruptible, we are having our conference that will take place from the 15th to the 18th of June. Now that's all from me, let's get ready to receive the word and enjoy the service. morning children of God are you good this morning so good to have you in the house of the Lord can we give God a big round of applause for the gift of life and that we are in his presence 
And once more, if you're wondering why are we having young people serving us today, because today it's Mother's Day. But before I can say anything to that, can we just give them a hand just to appreciate them? You did well. Amen. Really proud of you. And now to all the mothers in the house, we just want to take this time and wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Let's celebrate the mothers in the house. And those who are joining us virtually, we just want to say, may you have an awesome Mother's Day as well. Can we ask our mama, Papa Game, Sibasha Elizanda, just to appreciate them? We love you, mothers. We appreciate you. We honor you. God bless you. God honor you. God anoint you. God provide for you in the name of Jesus. Siantanja Gakulu. Hey, Sitlushan Jaymal. You see, if we had money, I would just give you my presence, each and every one of you. But that is why I had made sure, Ugoti, today, for those of you who are not registered, or maybe you want to register for your aunts, for your sisters, today is the day you are going to save 100 rands per ticket. So please make sure you do not lose this opportunity and save some bucks while doing that. Please make sure end of the service and this, this special runs until 12 o'clock midnight. So you can register at Pick and Pay and online at Web Ticket so that, you know, we fill up Sunbed Arena. Amen. Amen. So this morning, we just want to appreciate you, even the fathers that you are here. And I hope you're going to give me the amens that I need even this morning as we celebrate Mother's Day. And as a mother who's standing before you, just because it's Mother's Day. Amen. So can we bow our heads and pray? And so, Father, we just want to thank you that we find ourselves in your presence. That in your presence, there is fullness of joy. There are those who are downcast this morning, who are in distress, who are despairing. We pray, my Father, may you fill them with your joy. For your joy, oh God, is their strength. We thank you, my Father, even for your word. As we sit, my Father, to hear you speak to us. We know your word is going to renew our minds. We know your word is going to make us who are simple, wise, oh God. We pray, Holy Spirit, may you minister. Minister in a deep way in our hearts. So that when all is said and done, we know we heard you clearly. And we know exactly what we're supposed to do. Even the changes that we're supposed to bring about in our lives. Thank you, my Father, for transforming lives even this morning. By and through your word. In Jesus' precious name. And the church said, Amen and Amen. So this morning... We're continuing as we are celebrating Mother's Day on family legacy. So we said briefly, family legacy or a legacy is an imprint or a stamp or an impression that we leave on the future. And we said the question is not whether you're going to leave a legacy or not, but it's what kind of a legacy are you going to leave behind? Because all of us, we are going to leave a legacy either by default or by design. Intentionally leave something behind or by default. And we said a legacy is what we leave behind or what we pass on from one generation to the other. But as we celebrate Mother's Day, I, I believe all of us can agree that raising children is not easy. It's not for the faint heart raising children. It demands a lot from us parents. It demands our care. It demands our love. It demands our time. It demands our energy. It demands sometimes our sleep. Sometimes and most of the time or always, it demands our money. So raising children is not easy. But this morning as we are celebrating mothers, we just want to say the first person child raising places a huge demand on is a mother. Why the father has nine months to warm up to the idea that he's going to have a child. The mother already has a pregnant mother, already has some demands placed on her. Because she literally shares her body 
with this unborn child, literally shares the food that she eats with this un unborn child. And at times, she puts her life and her health at risk. Some of us mothers, you know, what we have gone through. We didn't even have some of the chronic illnesses. But just because you were carrying a child, you got sick. You almost lost your life because you were sharing your body with someone else. That is why I want us to celebrate and honor our mothers. Can you imagine if men were given an opportunity to give birth? Where would we be? That is why we are celebrating our mama Vanessa Bind. Almost losing your life and you go back for the second time, for the third time, for the fourth time. Hi, mama, Nineliva. Let's give it up to them this morning. In short, you can see that a mother's call to sacrifice begins as soon as she becomes pregnant. And that journey never ends. That is why this morning I want to speak to you on this subject, a mother's sacrifice or a mother's sacrificial love. There are many things that we mothers do for our children. And if I, I could just ask this morning that each and every one of you moms, you write those sacrifices that you have made, would have long lists of things that you have sacrificed so that your children can be here, so that they can be whoever that they are this morning. But before we go any further, I want us to look at what is sacrificial love. Sacrificial love is giving up something you value on behalf of your loved one. It is esteeming someone better than yourself to the point of choosing their well-being over yours. Some of us mothers, we know what is it to sleep without food. How is it to sleep without food? And you get the satisfaction. You at least have to about it. You know what is it to go without to take him bath? For you are saying, as long as my children they have clothes on their backs, then I am happy. You know what is it that you've been doing so that your children can be who they are today because you chose their well-being over yours. Sacrificial love, it is the divine selfless love towards another. Love that puts one in harm's way for the benefit of those loved. And by that definition alone, we actually realize that Christianity was, was birthed in sacrificial love. You remember Christ Jesus. He demonstrated his love for us, his love for the world by sacrificing his life for the world. That is why we are saying, if you are not prepared to sacrifice, then we do not know if you understand what your Savior did for you to be who you are today, for you to be saved even this morning. So the Bible is full of incredible mothers who sacrificially changed the course of history. And I want us to quickly look at them before I can just give you a few things before Saham Bagulendao. The first one was Hannah. Hannah was a woman who was, who was barren, but she went to God. She cried bitterly and said, Father, if only you can give me a son, then I would give him back to you. And she was Samuel's mother, the very Samuel who anointed David king. That is why we say she changed the face of history because of that sacrifice that she had made. And Jehoshiba, Jehoshiba was an aunt who decided to protect her nephew, who was soon to be king, King Joash, from being killed by his wicked grandmother, Athalia. So you realize that even this woman, she changed the face of history. What about Anna the prophetess? The Bible says she was a widow. And she was 84 years old. She only stayed with her husband for seven years. And she sacrificed her life. And she remained and served in the, in the temple, serving with prayers and fasting. 
she prophesied when she saw Christ Jesus being brought into the house of the Lord for dedication. She began to speak things to say this is the one who is going to save the world. And she told others within that very temple. And what about Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was prepared even to lay down and forego her marriage? Because she said, may it be done unto you, unto me, according to your will and purpose, O God. And she was willing to carry the Savior here, even if it meant that people were going to mock her and say, how can you be a pregnant virgin? And you can see even the verses right there. But this morning, I want us to look at this woman, Jochebed, the mother, mother of Moses. I wanted us to read from the book of Exodus, Exodus 2, from verse 1 to 10. But I thought, let's just summarize that and look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. The Bible reads, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. They hid him. Because they saw he was a beautiful child. He was a favored child. And if you read in the book of Exodus, it tells you what is it that this incredible mother, Jochebed, did just to hide and protect Moses. She defied Pharaoh's order and thus placed her life at risk, her family's life at risk. She was not afraid of the king's order or what the king would do unto her. She was willing to pay whatever price just to preserve her son's life. She was a faith-filled, discerning mother. The Bible says when she saw that Moses was beautiful, she decided to hide, realize that that, that word beautiful, it means Moses was favored. She saw that there was something in this young man that the Lord has placed upon him that is going to be a blessing in all Israel and that is going to be a blessing throughout all generations because she discerned. Yes, it was by faith, but she was discerning that there is something special about this child. Some of us, the reason why we are here is because our mothers were just like Jacobus. They looked at us and they realized we scobonkien. They don't look as beautiful as I expected them to be. But I, man, there is something upon this child. That is why I'm going to do anything and everything within my power to shield them, to preserve their lives, to protect them. That is why we are here this morning. Thank you, mothers. She used her limited time with her son Moses. You remember, she was asked to look after him. And that limited time, before she could release him to go and stay in Egypt's palace, she decided to make sure that she put in him whatever he needed to know this is my identity. Yes, I'm in that palace, but I am not Pharaoh's uh, daughter's son. I am the Hebrew of Hebrews. I am an Israelite. So she did that because she knew she was going to release him to that strange place that serves strange gods. That is why she had to pro, 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 protect and just provide, you know, for his future as well. You need to note that her sacrifice had great spiritual and generational blessings and benefit for her family and for Israel. And what about us as the church of Jesus? Because Moses became the deliverer. Moses became the channel by which the Lord brought about the law. And today we are well able to read the five books of the Bible because of the work of Moses. Because she saw as God sees. And she saw that this child was not an ordinary child. And that's what I'm praying for. Even this morning, in this country of ours, wherein we are killing countless unborn babies because we are calling them fetuses and we don't see them 
as babies. What loving mothers should do. What mother, loving mothers do. And if you are a father, please, you are part of this message. Just change and say, what a loving parent, what a loving dad should do. Because this is for all of us this morning. We need to lay a blanket of sacrifice as parents. We need to understand that this is the heart of sacrificial love. See, if you want to leave a godly legacy in your children, you must be willing to lay down legitimate desires and needs for their needs. Yekebeth, can you imagine taking that time, just being focused on Moses? She forgot about her dreams. She forgot about whatever that she wanted to do. She took care of Moses for that period because she knew the future dependent on it. So we as parents, we need to make sure that some of our legitimate needs, some of our physical needs are put at the back and we push forward the needs of our children. Actually, those who are sensible, they do that because they understand it is a blessing for them to have children. Therefore, they need to take care of them. They need to make sure that they honor God in grooming them to become those that God has created them to be. You see, the thing with children's needs, these needs are inconvenient. They are untimely. They come when you least expect them. They come when you are not at your best. They come when you are not ready. You have a headache, you are tired. And then the child gets sick. And you have to attend to them and forget about yourself. You are tired as a mom. And they've been screaming all night. And they begin to scream. That is why we're talking about a blanket of sacrifice. It's not just one sacrifice and you say you are done. But daily you sacrifice for them. Because children, they don't check your diaries to see whether it's time for them to rebel, whether it's time for them, you know, to get in trouble. But when they do, as a parent, you need to put aside what you are doing and focus on them because they need you as their guardian and as their parent. That is why raising them it needs God's strength, God's wisdom, and, you know, God's dose of provision from on high. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 14 to 15, for children ought not to lay up for their parents. And he talks about finances here. But I want us to focus on the principle. He says the parents, they need to lay down for the children. And I would very gladly spend and be spent for your souls, as he speaks to the church of Corinth. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. Some of us, we've been spending, and we are spending ourselves on behalf of our children. Even though sometimes they overlook our sacrifice, they forget to appreciate us. But we need to have them go on, Dr. Paul, and say, I would more gladly, Spend and be spent for the souls of my children. Regardless of what they are doing, I am just giving them this unconditional love because this is the very same love which I have received from the Lord. And John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. And I believe this is the kind of love that we have to have as parents towards our children. Because without sacrifice, Love becomes mere words and empty sentiments as a sacrifice is the backbone of true divine love. So if we love our children, we are going to sacrifice. And that's what I'm praying for even this morning, that the Lord may help us to continually make those sacrifices for their well-being. The second thing, that loving parents, loving moms, loving dads do, they rethink their ambitions. 
they rethink their dreams. Just like the godly mothers of old, they discern the times. Just like the sons of Issachar, who knew what Israel had to do when. This is what I am praying for. That as parents, we need to discern. For now, it's not about me. For now, it's not about my ambitions. Yes, there are places where I need to reach, but not at the expense of my children. I am willing to rethink my ambition, to readjust them so that I'm well able to serve my children better. So this morning, Bazali, Niti, yes, continue to dream. Yes, continue to have those ambitions. But do not put your children on the altar of those dreams, on the altar of those ambitions. Sing about You know, I've actually realized about raising children, it's not easy. And it needs one to adopt a posture of humility. You know the reason why some of us we feel hi, I'll just mind my things. Now Baba Zabon good by It's because we're thinking we are too important. More than our children are. But if you have a posture of humility, not only do you see your children better than yourself, but that's what we are praying for. To say, Father, if this is the level by your grace that I was able to reach, I believe my children are going to so higher. Because you understand, no matter how important you are, your children have the potential to do greater things than you have done. And it is your responsibility as a parent to help them tap into that potential and become all that God has created them to be. Therefore, you are humble enough to pour in into them. You pour in your time. You pour in your energy. You pour in your best effort. You pour in your money. You pour in everything. Any resource that you have by God's grace, you pour in into them. Because you see that these children are going somewhere that I've never even imagined they would reach. Because it is... The parents' responsibility to willingly lay down our dreams so that our children can accomplish more than we could. Actually, this is Jesus' MO. Age he checks out and he says, it is finished. He was thinking, I've got them. And they're going to do more. And they're going to do greater. Let's just be humble enough for a moment and imagine what extra 40 years could have done in Jesus' life. Had he remained here on earth, how many people he could have healed? How many people he could have touched? How many people he could have uh, 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 served and fed? But he said, John 14, 12, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do works I've been doing. And they will do even greater things than this because I am going to my father. You realize that he prepared the disciples. He spoke to them. He assured them of their salvation. Not only that, he said, let your heart not be troubled, for I am going to my father. And in my father's house, there are many mansions. And when I leave this place, the one who would be with you at all times in different places. The Holy Spirit, he would come and tabernacle within you. Not only that, but after resurrection, 40 days later, he ascended to heaven. And he didn't get there just to sit. He continually intercedes for us. If we can have that as parents, 
to say we prepare them. We put in them. Legacy is not what you leave for your children only, but it's what you leave in them. You leave in them something that would make them to stand. And even when you are not there with them, you continue to cover them with prayers and say, Father, may they continue to do greater works than I have done. How do we do greater works as a church of Jesus on the back of the sacrifice of Christ Jesus? And how would our children get equipped and become greater and influential people of their time at our backs as their parents? So we need to make sure that we continue to pour into them by rethinking our ambitions and our dreams. If that thing you think generationally, this is what Jochebeth did. She saw him and she saw generations blessed through this young man. And this is how we need to look at our children. I don't care what I'm saying, but this morning I am praying, may you look at them just like God looks at them. The truth is the Pharaoh, Satan, he wants to kill them. He wants to destroy them. That is why to take eyes that see and hearts that understand that they have been called for such a time and they have been called for these wicked days. Therefore, we need to make sure that we just see them as God sees them and we support them like God expects us to support them so that they can become that which God has created them to be. We, we take interest in their lives. We invest in them for the sake of the next generations, for the sake of the future generations. The truth is, Bazalwana, we grew up in an environment that was moderately opposed to the Christian faith. Hey, today, Bazalwana, we are fiercely being opposed for our convictions as the body of Christ. And if our children, they would never know what they're supposed to stand for. What's going to happen? Because things are not getting better. Today we're being challenged about sexuality. We've been challenged about gender. Now they're telling us about gender neutrality. They say, Umtana some other places, I think in Canada also, they don't even give them a gender. They just say and eat. It's only when they are old enough, eight years, I'm not sure whether that's old enough, that they decide to say, I want to be this. That is why they pump them with our hormones. Bazalona, if the church of Jesus is not equipped, especially the youth. So, that is why the honors is upon us parents to realize what is cutting of minding earthly things only. It's over. Yes. Yes. If we want our children yeah. to stand by the convictions that we are standing, not unless you do not know what your convictions are. Then you need to go back to the word. Then you need to speak to some of the pastors in the house so that we can tell you what we stand for. The Bible says he created them, male and female. Even though they dub us intolerant, even though they are trying to say, to tell us that's hate speech, even though they are trying to say very soon we'll go to prison if we stand by those convictions. But I am praying for mothers and fathers who would understand to say, even if it will call for our children to be in prison for what they stand for, this is our stance. This is our conviction. And we are not going to apologize for it. He created them. Male and female. He was not confused. They're trying to redefine marriage. If we don't tell our children, you know the sad thing, Abantuana, sometimes when you tell them, they even roll their eyes on you to say, hi, we've heard, my mama, please. They, they even call me. Let me not tell you what they call me. Let me just keep quiet. But we just need to be intentional. 
They may call us names. But it is only in retrospect that they would look back and say, thank you, Jesus, for our parents. Thank you, Jesus, for our mother, for our father, who stood for what they believe in. Hence, we equip them on kingdom living in the face of opposition and mold them to be the deliverers that they are called to be. Bantuanabam, all the young people, understand that the enemy is after your life. The enemy wants to kill you. The enemy wants to destroy you. That is why you are as confused as you are this morning. That is why as I am preaching, just say, Father, help me. God, help me. You need to be concerned about your life as well and understand that just like Moses was called to be a deliverer, the Lord has created you to be the savior and the deliverer of our times as well. The beautiful promise that we get from the Lord, Isaiah 59, 21, he says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you. And my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children and on the lips of their descendants from this time on and forever. God is a generational God. And he has promised this is the covenant that I have made, that his spirit that rests upon us shall be upon us and shall continue to be upon our children. The word, the word of life, the word of truth that is upon our lips shall continually be upon our children's lips. And maybe you are wondering this morning, why is it? So that their lips as well, they catch the very same anointing of the word in the name of Jesus. The Bible says forever and ever, our descendants will serve the Lord. It is short-sightedness and arrogance at best for parents to become so focused on their own lives that they should change the younger generation's future by not passing on to them through devotion of God and all the advantages and all the benefits they've received from God. This morning I'm asking you, what is it that the Lord has given you? And one of the way how you know, Uti, I'm different, that I'm anointed, that I'm unique. The question is, are you going to go with those things? And if you don't want to go with them, what are you doing to ensure that you pass them on from this generation to the next generation? The last point, we pray earnestly for them. They need to be prayed for daily, persistently, sincerely. A loving mother a loving parent, a loving father wants to wrap their children with his arms and protect them from any harm. Sometimes how I wish my goodness so that we can just protect them and clean and close them up so that the Pharaoh doesn't lay his hands on them. But the one thing that we can do to wrap our arms around them is by praying for them. That's how we protect them. That's how we shield them. That's how we cover them. Prayer. Prayer. I can never overemphasize the importance of prayer. That we pray for Abantuana Bento. Bazalwana. There will come a time, and some of us, it is that time now, where we don't have control over what they do. As a sensible parent, you need to just surrender your control over them. Give up that control over them. But 
you need to hand them over to God. No matter how difficult that is, you release them to the hands of the Lord. We are living in this wicked world. No matter how difficult it is, release them. You cannot control them anyway. Release them. Hannah and Samuel. Father, if you give me this son, I would give him back to you. And that time came when the son was supposed to be taken to the temple. And I'm not talking about a temple that is pure. I'm talking about a wicked temple. Where the priest, Abu Mama and Abu Baba, Mamanj, where with them everything goes. In the name of loving our children. They are so spoiled. They are so spoiled. He can preach something about that. To say, please don't do it. I've done it. And Hannah had to release the young Samuel, tender as he was, to the prophet who failed to raise his children well. But I believe there's always hope for a praying mother. There is always hope for a praying father. You say, Mama, I'm going Go to a father, I pray and I speak a hedge of protection around them. I speak fire around them. And I pray, Holy Ghost, wherever they go, go with them, oh God. Wherever they are, protect them, shield them, preserve them. That's what we do. You wake up in the middle of the night and say, Mom, I do not know, but have I asked when? I don't know what they are up to, but wherever they are, arrest them, oh God. When they want to be mischievous, arrest them, my Father. Convict them, Holy Spirit. Get Jesus I'm not sure if we are still in a church that believes in the power of prayer. Isn't Things are bound to shift. Things are bound to move if we pray. Bobaba, Mama, I am begging you, please. For the sake of this younger generation, may we not abandon prayer. May we be prayerful. We may not have control over a number of things that are happening in this life. But we have control over this one thing. Choosing to pray without ceasing. Choosing to pray at all times. Because we believe prayer helps. Prayer works. There's power in prayer. Unfortunately, for some of us, our children grew. They cho chose to deviate from the ways of faith, from the way of the Lord. And this morning, you are hating. You know, it's so difficult to see your children squandering their lives, wasting their lives, and you are helpless as a parent, as a mother, and as a father. But you are never helpless. I believe you can pray for them. Jesus understands this morning. This is what the Lord, the word of the Lord says. He understands the cry of a mother's heart, the cry of a father's heart that longs to protect and shelter those who are saying no to such. He says in Luke chapter 19, verse 41 to 42, as he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he began to weep, to weep over it and said, if only you knew on this day what would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. 
And I believe abantwana bethu nabo ababoni that is why they think baja joy that's why they think they are living life because the thing that would bring peace in their lives has been hidden from their eyes and in Matthew chapter 23 verse 37 Jesus said Jerusalem Jerusalem you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you are not willing you are not willing it's very hard to watch your children suffer but this morning I want you to understand that we can pray we continue to pray yes we come up with other tools of helping them but prayer should be the first and effective tool that we run to just to help our children you remember that woman the Canaanite woman who had the daughter, whose daughter was possessed by a demon. She approaches Jesus and she said, Lord, help me. Not help my daughter. For my sake, Lord, help me. And the merciful king seemed to be unbending. The great physician withheld us, it seems. He withheld healing. That woman begged again to say, Lord, at first she said, son of David. But the second time she said, Lord, have mercy on me. And I believe that is the prayer that we're supposed to make. We identify with our children, even though Tina Kolapo, because they do not understand at that particular time. I don't think that daughter understood who was demon possessed, but the mother on her behalf said, Lord, have mercy. She was persistent. She persistently asked, even when the disciples said, send her away, she comes after us. She kept coming. And that is what I want us to do even this morning. To say, Father, have mercy on us. Because we see that future generations, they depend on the well-being of our children. Until they are back home would never stop interceding, would never stop crying out to the Lord until they are restored. And this morning I want those parents who are saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Wherever you are this morning, I want you to stand and say, my children are coming back home. Wherever they are, through the spirit of the living God, they are going to be convicted He's mighty to save. He's mighty to deliver. Nothing is too difficult for him. Those of us who've been pierced, those who've been wounded, because our children, they chose to squander their lives this morning. I would ask you to stand so that we can continue to stand with you and believe God with you. If you are here, just stand. Get calm, my Jesus Christ. I need you. Oh, I need.
Father, this morning, we humble ourselves before you, O oh God. Just like the Canaanite woman, my Father, we come before you and we pray. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Have mercy on us, O oh King. Now, in this your even this morning, as we see how they are squandering their lives, as we see how they are wasting their lives, God on Cosiamu Simile, Sipegi Sagon Kegwen, David says, When my soul is overwhelmed within me, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. Ungun kulun kulo kululayo. Ungun kulun kulo pilisayo. Ungun kulun kulo lungisayo. That is why we pray wherever they are, in whatever state they are in, oh God, we speak their deliverance in the name of Jesus. May you, oh God, set them free. Some of them, oh God, they are under an influence right now. Abazaza makama. What do we my God, we pray. Intervene, oh God. Show yourself mighty and strong on our behalf. Baba Sasi, Uba David says, when my soul is overwhelmed within me, you know the way that I should take. Sniggers of Shagani Pankos, that we may know how to best love them, how to best serve them, and how to best help them, oh God. That's what we are praying for this morning. We declare by Abuya, wherever they are, they are coming back. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it is done. It is done, it is done. In the name of Jesus. It is done, it is done. Oh, bless me. Oh, bless me now. Bless me now, my Savior. My Savior. for that word. What a wonderful word. You can do better than that. What a wonderful word. We have come to an end of our service and we thank God for the heart of a mother that has just been poured out in this place. Maybe before we go, we can only take our children to the Christ we know. We can only prescribe that which we have tasted to a sick situation. Could be that you are here, you are a parent, and you are saying, my children are troubling me, but I don't know what to do. There is a Christ who knows all things. Can I prescribe Christ to your situation? If you are here and you don't know Christ, and you are saying, my situation is delicate, my situation is precarious, I don't know the difference between left and right. There's a Jesus who knows. Can I introduce you to him? If you're here and you're saying, Mfundisi, my situation needs help. And I think Jesus can help me. Just want you to raise your hand. We've got 10 minutes. I'm going to pray quickly. Just raise your hand. If you're here, you're saying, I need Jesus in my life. I don't want to waste such a powerful 
sermon. I want to cry to him and he should recognize me because we are Zaz. Are you here? And you are saying, Fundisi, pray with me. Just raise your hand. Don't be shy. We all lifted our hands one day and he came and when we cry, he hears us. Are you here? Is there a hand? I see there's a hand at the back. Is there anybody else? If you've raised your hand, just, just take your, your bag and your belongings and just come in front here. We're going to say just a simple prayer and release you. But we want you to testify publicly that I want him, I need him. That Moses it's not a numbers game. It's a heart game. Hallelujah. Especially the Kuli. By the way, Makpendu can enjoy it. Makpendu go it. Liti by the way, we are going to talk Hallelujah. Nange Juli Jesus. Mosi zabanye. Nisi zenami. Mosi zabanye nisi zenami. Dungeon paka misi zanda mbafuwe tu Sanda senu Sangwa right and say this prayer after me Nkosu Jesu I confess with my mouth I believe in my heart That God raised you From the dead And that you reign Forevermore Thank you Jesus For saving my life My life belongs to you Devil You will never ever rule my life my life belongs to Jesus and Jesus alone Amen Brothers I'm going to ask you to just go to those sisters who are carrying the board in your life in Christ and they're going to give you something to read about the journey that you have just made Hallelujah Especially You are you are again reminded that the tickets are at a discount today for the women's conference please make sure that you pass by the information desk and can you stand i'm going to pray and release you in jesus name amen did you enjoy the service today i also did it was a powerful sermon heavenly father we come before your throne so we're about to leave oh god we understand that we are your inheritance that men will not see you, but they will see you through us. As we live, oh God, in this place, we pray that those of us that were hurting are hurting no longer. Those of us that were angry are angry no longer. Those of us that were confused are confused no longer. Because the spirit of Christ that there dwells, dwells in us is guiding us and lifting us to even greater heights. Heavenly Father, as your children leave this place, I pray, O oh God, that you guide their steps, that you fight their battles. Pray, Lord, that you lift them higher, that you lift them from one level of glory to another. As they go out, O oh God, I pray, may that mental, O oh God, not depart from them. Lord God Almighty, I pray wisdom over their lives. I thank you, Lord, that you are continually, oh, Father, lift them, lift them higher. Now, Father, we thank you that the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the love of God and the grace, mercy of, the, of Christ will dwell with each and every one of us now and forevermore. And everybody that believes said amen. amen. As you go to serve him, have a wonderful week. If you need prayer, don't go. There are elders that are going to come here and pastors to pray with you. If you need a prayer, don't go. We are here to pray with you. God bless you. Amen. You are king.